hello my lovelies welcome back to the channel this is your girl angel from simply angel tia in this video we're doing the very first cape for the channel this is it here i thought i would do something that is a little bit different just to make it so that you guys have different things to try so it's gonna be a cape that we're working on for this i'm gonna be putting these buttons on which is completely optional you don't have to you could just do um a strap right here by the neck just like capes normally go where you can just tie it here and then the rest of it falls open or you can do buttons like i did i'm using these buttons from amazon that are very super super cute um they have an owl on it and so because i finished this project before halloween i think i will post it so that it's kind of like a halloween project um so yeah this is it here we're gonna be working on this is very simple we're using simple stitches as per usual so don't worry you think it's going to be complicated trust me it's not going to be but this is what we're going to be working on here okay so let's go ahead and get started okay my lovelies so for this project i have my materials here ready to go i'm just going to talk about this quickly so i have my stitch markers in case you need some maybe you will you need a darning needle if you need to weave in your ends or just use it for any of the stuff you need to do I have my crochet hook here, which is a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook or I9 US. And I will talk about what is recommended in a bit. Um, my tape measure here to be able to determine the size if you need it for me, because I make everything at, on my, in my size. I often try things on as I go, but if you do need to determine your size in advance, then that's the reason for the tape measure. And then I scissors obviously to cut your strands. So let's talk a little bit about the yarn here. So I'm using this pound of love yarn. I've had this for quite a while. I brought this from Canada and, uh, it's called charcoal. So it's not quite black or gray. It's a charcoal, this kind of color, I don't know. It's almost like grayish, but it's a little bit more in the darker mix uh, gray. But anyways, it's called charcoal. Uh, what else do we need to know about this yarn? So for the, it's a, a medium weight number four. Um, so I already talked to you guys about the recommendation of the hook size. No, I did not. Oh, it's J10 US uh, or a six millimeter crochet hook um 100 percent premium acrylic and for measurements of the yarn this cane here is uh 1020 yards uh or 932 meters or 454 grams or 16 ounces in terms of weight so if this is what um you're going to be using then just one of these guys here should do okay so that's the yarn we're going to be using. These are the materials we're going to be using. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started here. So the first thing I forgot to show you guys, actually, I have some buttons here that I don't know if I'm going to use yet, but we will see at the end of the project. But as you can see, I just have a collection of buttons here. This one came with mixture of different um, sizes. But anyways, I may use these at the end um, if I do see that my cape requires um, some some buttons. But for now, I'm going to put them on the side. But uh, if you don't use them, it's okay. But I may be able to use them later. All right. So with that said, we're going to go get ahead and get started. So with this project, I'm going to start by doing a magic circle. Um, for those of you who do a magic circle by doing chains, do, do start by doing a chain of three. Okay. Oh, sorry. Chain of four. But because I don't do chains, I will, I will, I guess I'll just show you quickly how to do the chain route, which I don't use. So for the chain route, you're going to just do this and then you will do a chain of four. So one, two, three, four, and then you slip stitch in the first chain like this. And then now this is your magic circle. This center here is where you will work your stitches. Oops. You could, you will work your stitches into this hole here. But because I don't do this, I go by just doing a magic circle that is completely different than how most do it, I think. So I just loop it around my thumb like this, hold it open by holding this X section here, and then put my loop through, my hook through, bring it in like that. And then I go ahead and do uh, the number of chains to start with. And in this project, I'm going to start by doing a chain of three. So one two three and this chain three counts as a double crochet and so i'm going to do five more double crochets into my magic circle so i just keep holding it open like this so that's one two three 
two, three, four, and five. And so it makes it six with the chain three that we started the row with. Like this, I'm just gonna count to make sure. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So I have my six double crochets here. So I'm gonna close my magic circle like this okay now that i have that completed i'm going to go ahead and this row is going to start with a chain of three every time because chain three will uh, count as a double crochet so we're going to start the next row by doing a chain three and turning and then we're going to do an increase all on this here so in this same stitch where this chain three just came from which is right here we're going to complete another double crochet to make it two because we're increasing on every stitch on this row. And then in the next stitch right here, we're going to do two double crochets. And I know this yarn is a little bit hard to see, probably also with the color of my table, but I hope you guys can kind of see here. So I do my two double crochets here and then I move on to the next stitch here when I do two double crochets. And just like that. Then I move on to my next stitch right here and I do two double crochets, just like that. And then I move on to the next stitch right here and complete two double crochets. So I'm just increasing on every stitch. So every stitch has two double crochets into it. And don't forget our chain three at the end here counts as a stitch. So we just did two double crochets here and then on top of that chain three, so the very last chain up, we're going to do two double crochets into that. Okay, because we don't want to leave that hanging there. It's going to make it so that we don't have enough number of stitches in this row. Like that. And again, I pull this. So this is the end of my row two for this cape. Okay. And I apologize. I know it's not a very colorful color, but... Uh, C'est la vie. That's, that's life. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and start my row three. So for row three, we're going to increase every other stitch. And then we alternate by just doing that until we build the size of our cape. Okay. So for this, we start with chain three again. So one, two, three, turn. And then in this very first stitch here where this chain three comes from, we're going to do another double crochet in there. So this is an increase. We increase just by adding that second one in the same stitch, we increase this, this uh, row. And then in the next stitch right here, we do one double crochet. Then we move on to the next here and we do two double crochets in that stitch. So we increase in that stitch. And then the next stitch, we do one double crochet. And then in the next stitch, we do two double crochets into the same stitch. And then one double crochet into the next. And then two double crochets into the next. So increasing every other stitch, okay? So we do these all the way to the end. So this is an increased stitch. And then a non increased stitch, an increased stitch right here. And then we have one more stitch at the end. And we do one on top of that chain three. So that's a non increased row, a stitch. Okay. So that's my row three completed. So very simple. So then in the next row, we increase after two stitches. So we skip, we do just a single stitch in a, in two stitches and then in the third we increase then we go into two stitches with single with double crochets and then we increase by doing two double crochets into the third so again we start by doing a chain of three which counts as a double crochet we turn we increase immediately so the beginning of the row always increases the end of the row does not increase because we end up just by the way it counts, it ends up that at the end, we don't end up increasing in the final stitch. So we increase here and then one double crochet here, one double crochet here, 
and then two double crochets in the third okay like that and then one double crochet here one double crochet here and then two double crochets into the third okay and then one double crochet here one double crochet here and then two double crochets in the third okay so as you can see the pattern increases this way there's nothing else to be done differently besides just increasing uh increasing your work and every row is gonna have uh you're going to skip one more stitch uh or you're going to do single crochets oh i did too many here i don't one two i should be doing i talked too much i forgot that i needed to do this here increase and then two more double crochets without increasing and then two double crochets together to increase in here oops and oops oh la la and then as you can see we have two stitches to go so it means at the end we don't increase in two final ones okay and in the next one it's gonna be three final ones we don't increase and then in the next with three final four we don't increase in and things like that so i'll show you one more row so you start by doing a chain of three turn increase immediately so in the very first stitch you go into the first stitch twice or like go once because your chain three counts as a double crochet and then in this row we skip we we work no more double crochet into three stitches into three separate stitches and then we increase in the fourth and then we repeat okay so here we're gonna go into this stitch not increasing it into the next stitch no increase into the next stitch no increase and then boom into the next we increase by doing two double crochets into the same stitch okay and then in the next one two three not increasing in the fourth we increase okay one and two double crochets into the same stitch and then work three double crochets in each of the next three stitches so one two and three and then in the fourth here we increase by doing two double crochets together and then one two three and the next two double crochets together and then one two three okay and then in the next here the two double crochets oops two double crochets together and then as you can see what i told you earlier is the next three double crochets at the end are just normal double crochet in each stitch okay so like i said again in the next row it's gonna be four final stitches are just normal double crochets and in the next row is five and six and seven and then it just continues to build up like this so this is how the first one two three four five rows of our work looks like so because here we worked this row by a skip like by doing three double crochets that are normal increasing in the fourth in the next one we're going to do four double crochets that are normal increasing the fifth in the next row we're going to do five normal double crochets increasing the sixth and then in the next we increase in the seventh in the eighth in the ninth in the tenth eleven twelve all the way until you have this part of your project completed okay so very easy okay so i'm just going to repeat this quickly again in case so in the first row here we have six double crochets in the next we have 12 because we increase in every single stitch and then in the next which is the third row we skip uh we skip one double crochet 
and then in the yeah the one double crochet and in the next we increase we skip one uh, not skipping we're working one double crochet into an individual stitch and then in the next stitch we we work two double crochets in the next stitch we work one double crochet in the next stitch we work two double crochets and then in the fourth row we work uh two one two three four we work four double crochets in each individual stitch and then in the fifth we increase uh is it and wait two two sorry not not three so we we work two double crochets individually and then in the third we increase and then in this fourth row here we we work three double crochets individually and then in the fourth we increase by doing two double crochets so which means then in the next one we work four double crochets individually and in the fifth we increase and then we continue to do it like that so i will have you guys work this so for this part of it this is where you will probably want to know what the measurements are so for it being a cape you can literally almost do it at any size so you can do it so that it's not too long not too short not too whatever it is but um you're probably gonna pretty much measure from here which is gonna be this is this part is gonna be where your neck goes because you're gonna wear your cape like this so because this is where your neck is gonna go right here then you just measure how far this you want this to go down and the more you work it the more it's gonna build yourself itself down like this so work it until you have the length that you want and then when you have it nice and the right size then you come back and we will work on the hoodie and also this is also the best way to do it is just if you're making it for yourself for example you keep trying it on so just kind of throw this around your neck like this and see how it looks just like this and then see how long it's gonna be and then if you need to add rows you continue to work it and then eventually when it reaches the length that you want you stop there and then you come back to the video and we move on to the next part of it okay i will see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so this is the part that i have completed here for the cape and as you can see i had to lay it on my bed because it's just a little too big on my work table and i wanted you guys to see the full um part here I apologize for the bad quality of part of this video. I am doing it with just the ceiling light and of course it's not very good. Um, yeah, but this is pretty much it here. So we have completed this part where I have stopped and I stopped because I have this much yarn left, which is going to be enough, I think, to do the, uh, the cape part of it. Or the uh, the uh, hoodie part of it I hope it's gonna be okay but that's what we have left here so I stopped after I thought I would have enough to do the hoodie part okay I have about uh, 46 or sorry 36 rows all together here actually no 46 46 rows all together here and the measurement from this corner here all the way to this corner came up to about 56 inches okay so it goes around like this and as you can see kind of caves in like this um and then we're gonna be able to join the two sides pretty much kind of like this on one side and like these on one side and that's how we're gonna be able to create our cape okay so obviously i'm not showing it to you guys quite nice enough down here on the table on the bed but this is pretty much how our cape is going to look like and i think i'm deciding i'm gonna put some buttons on it i'm just not sure yet but we will see when we add the hoodie and as you can see as well i have added the stitch markers right here and here and that's because i want to do my hoodie in this section here so what i did was i put a this uh cape on me and then this is kind of where it falls under just under my collarbone it falls down like this and the same here and then i counted how many rows on this side and i came up to i think 15 rows on this side 15 rows on this side so then i just put the stitch markers there so my hoodie is gonna go right here like this okay so that's pretty much it so i'm gonna take you guys now to the work table to show you how to do the rest of it which is gonna be to show you guys how to do the hoodie part okay see you guys in a minute okay my lovelies so we are back on the work table and as you can see um i just put down the cape like this so as you've seen we have done it until we kind of came to a point where it's gonna be too late if we use the whole uh skein of yarn so we do have a good length here i didn't tell you guys the length of it because i told you the the this length like that 
um but the length where it falls down let me see i'm gonna grab my tape here uh, i'm not gonna be able to show you guys the whole thing on camera here but i will measure it so you guys know how long it is how far it's gonna fall down your back for example it's about 25 inches okay so this is 25 inches like this so it's gonna fall down uh, kind of like midway towards your um towards your lower back okay all right so that's done and like i've said you put i put these on to be able to determine where to start my hoodie because our hoodie is going to build up like this and i will join it um and i've done 15 rows here and the way i did it is i just counted this number of rows along like this and on the 15th so this is the 15th one i put a stitch mark right here and then i just duplicated by doing the same on this side okay so that's done what i will do here is i will cut the yarn off here for this side just somewhere like that and then i will slip stitch here and just kind of leave it like that for now because the other thing i'm thinking too is that when i work on my hoodie and i realize i don't have enough yarn i can always remove a couple of rows here. i can remove one or two rows to add it to the hoodie because the cape can be any length that you want it can be extremely long in the back and it can be as short as you want it as well so it's not going to be a big deal be a big deal but yeah so this is what i have here so all i will need to do it doesn't what matter what side you start with as long as you start somewhere <laughs> so i'm gonna start on the right hand side here because i'm right-handed if you're left-handed maybe you will start on that side i don't know but you just have to start somewhere and what i will do is i will connect my yarn on that stitch where the stitch marker is and then i will work stitches across and then we will build up our uh, hoodie okay so I'm just gonna do a slip knot here like that and then from the slip knot I'm gonna go ahead and remove my stitch marker here making sure I don't lose this spot here and I'm gonna put it right into that spot where my stitch marker was and I'm gonna bring it through okay so just bring it through like this and then here i'm gonna do a chain of one okay and this chain of one does not count as a stitch and as you can see there's this section here i'm going to go into that section and complete a half double crochet and i'm gonna go into the same spot and complete a second half double crochet then i'm gonna move over to this gap here so this is just the rows of the double crochets from the the sides that we worked on I'm gonna go into that gap here and complete two half double crochets as well. And then in the next, this gap here, I go in and complete two half double crochets. So you kind of understand what I'm doing here. So I'm just putting two half double crochets in the gap where there is a double crochet from the rows that were going like this. Okay, and what this does is it just creates a base of me working my stitches when I start to work on the double crochet stitches because these half double crochet stitches here that I'm doing, they're not going to be what we work with for the rest of the project. We're going to go back to doing our, our double crochets, okay? So we're just going to go ahead and work with the half double crochets and don't forget, you're just completing two per these gaps here, these big gaps that we have, which is each row uh of the double crochet rows that we did previously okay so i would like you guys to work this until you come to the middle when you get to the middle come back i will show you how to work yourself in the middle here and then we will finish off by crossing over to the other side okay see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so i have worked my half double crochets across from where we started here and as you can see i am just right before the middle i just did two half double crochets here so what I will do in this section here is I will do another half double crochet, but I will actually go in here. Instead of here, I'm going to just kind of grab it from underneath these stitches here like this. So I'm going to go in like this, okay? So I'm going to go yarn over, go under here, and then complete a half double crochet like that. So I grab this the, the yarn that loops from this stitch here, and I will complete a half double crochet here. And then I will go right straight to the other side and I will do the exact same thing on the other side. And I will just go like this and complete a half double crochet. And then I will go into the next gap here and complete two double crochets. 
okay so what this does is it just kind of lines it up so that it's the same as on this side here so i have two and then one and then i have one and then two immediately after that and as you can see i'm also now beginning to weave in my work that i had from the the, the middle of the work here so i'm just gonna go ahead and continue with that so then i go into the next gap here and do my two half double crochets just like we did previously and then move over to this gap here and complete two half double crochets and then move over to this gap here and complete two half double crochets and then that's it and then i just continue all the way to the stitch marker now the one thing you need to remember is that um because we want to make sure the number of stitches on this side is the same as on this side make sure just count when you're done so for example um i have 15 rows that i skipped here but i'm doing two half double crochet per stitch so i have th uh, 30 but then i have 31 because of that random one that i did in the middle here remember so i have 31 stitches here so you should have 31 stitches on this other side and then when you have made sure that that is all nice and fixed and the number of rows is equal on each side then come back to the video and i will show you how to start the next row which is going to be your repeat row for the hoodie part until we have the size that we want and for me it's gonna obviously be until i'm done my yarn or if it's too big after i have worked on it and there's leftover yarn i can always do another row in the bottom just to finish off the yarn because i don't need to have leftover yarn that is a small amount or if i don't have enough um let's say i do my hoodie and i realize it's too small i could always undo some rows in the bottom okay so that's what i'm gonna be doing and i will do all of that offline so when i come back i will have my hoodie built up and then we'll come back to join it and if i did any kind of change in terms of maybe removing some yarn in the bottom to increase my hoodie or um, i ended up doing another row in the bottom to finish off the yarn i will come and tell you all of that okay but for now let's just go all the way to here and then come back okay my lovelies so i have worked my stitches here all the way to where the stitch marker was so this is where i had just had the stitch marker and i did my two half double crochets into that gap here I made sure I counted my stitches. I have 31 on this side, 31 on this side. So I have 62 rows all, or stitches all together across here like this, okay? So that's what we have. So now we're going to start working on the repeat rows. So we're going to do a chain of two and turn. I'm just going to turn the whole thing so that it's easy to work like this. And then I, so this chain two here counts as a double crochet. So it works with this stitch right here, the very first stitch this one here so i need to work a stitch on top of this so i will go right into this stitch here and complete my next double crochet and then i'll go into this stitch and complete my second double crochet and then go into every stitch across okay so again you just have to work double crochets across until you get to the other side and then we will go ahead and do a chain of two and turn and then repeat that and then we repeat this until we have what we need for the hoodie um so i'm gonna work until the end with you so no but not working with you so work your double crochets all the way to the end when you come to this side before you go into the last stitch come back and i will show you how to work into the last stitch and how to start the next row and then i will have you guys work your um your hoodie from that point until you finish uh, this length of the size of the hoodie but for now let's bait at the very end so that i can show you what to do at the end there okay my lovelies so i have worked my double crochets across as you can see i went from here all the way here and as you can see i wanted to show you guys how to go into this last stitch here uh because you don't want to just stop here it's gonna look like that which is not good so we're gonna go right into this final stitch here like this and just go into it's actually the half double crochet that we started the row with earlier um i did say that it did not count as a stitch but in this case it does in the sense that you get to go into the final stitch like that because you want your work to line up like that okay so we're gonna start our second row of the double crochets and we're gonna chain two and turn I'm just going to fix this stitch here. It's a little bit loose and weird looking. I'm just going to fix it like this. Okay. Chain two and turn. Okay. And at this point, your work is super bulky. So you have to turn it everything like this so that it's easy for you to work with. 
and then you go so this counts as a double crochet which lines up to this stitch right here and then you just go into the next stitch and complete your second double crochet and then into the next stitch and do a double crochet into the next stitch and do a double crochet and as you can see you just repeat this all the way to the end when you get to this end here you will do your final double crochet on top of this chain two so right here and then chain two turn and just continue and you're going to keep doing this until you have a length that you need for your hoodie you can measure just from the base of your neck for example just right below your neck uh, like kind of where your spine starts in a way in a sense or just like between your shoulder blades there um, you can measure just a little bit above that and go all the way over your head so let's say this is your head like this so i don't have anything to use so let's say this is your head and this is the base of the back of your head and then your neck starts here you're gonna put a tape measure right here and just measure it like this to where you want it to where your face or where your hairline goes where you can then stop okay so you can put a tape measure like this and then measure that and then when you work your work you will continue to do that until you hit the number of inches that corresponds to this number here obviously if you want your hoodie to be big and buggy you can go a little bit further um it's all how you want it okay but then when you have this kind of size established you can come back to the video and we will go ahead and join it but um yeah so that's how we you would measure or if you just know what your measurement is you can go ahead and just work what that measurement is okay but i will do mine the same way and then i'll come back uh, when i have had the size that i need and like i said i could end up and doing one or two rows to finish my hoodie uh, or not but we will see i will let you know guys when i come back okay see you guys in then okay my lovelies so i have gone ahead and completed the part up here that is going to be the hood for our cape and as you can see this is pretty much it here i have gone through the whole skein of yarn with just an exception of this much left which i'm going to use to join this here um so that's all we have left here so i ended up doing 20 rows here so i have my first row of half double crochet then i had 18 rows of the double crochet and then i completed the end of it here with half double crochet as well not because i needed to because i had enough yarn left over to just be able to do the half double crochet but not enough to do another row of double crochet i hope you understand what that means because otherwise i would have had this amount of yarn here plus all this left over which would have ended up just being useless so i was like let's just do one more row of it okay so i ended up doing a final row here of half double crochet okay so and um in terms of measurements let me just grab my tape measure in terms of measurement here let's see let's see what we have and of course, this is all going to be different from one person to another. But the length of it here is about tw almost 20 inches. It's 19 and 3 quarters for the section up like this or uh, uh, diagonally. And then horizontally here, you have about 10 inches. Okay, so we have 10 inches of the this part here. So that's just in case you need to know what the measurement is okay so with that done i have my work kind of set up in a way that i'm gonna fold it like this to create my hoodie so that's what i'm gonna do first of all what i will do here is just kind of finish off this here and all i need to do is just do a slip knot and then lock it up slip knot and then or chain one and then pull and then just lock that up like that okay all right so then i'm going to fold it like this and now I need to sew the top shut. And this is going to be our hood here, obviously. So I will put it like this. And I will bring in my darning needle. I will use this red one since it's going to look, it's going to give a contrast. Because if I use a darker one, it's going to make it hard to see for you guys. Okay, so just like that. And then I'm going to line my work up here like this. I'm going to go into that very first stitch and then the very first stitch on the other side and then I'm going to pull and I'm going to do that one more time in the same stitch but this time I'm going to loop my yarn around like that and just locks it here and then I'm going to pull tight 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 okay and then the rest of it is just going to be 
going into the next stitch grabbing both loops going into the next stitch grabbing both loops or the other side and then pulling but make sure you don't pull too much here going to the next do the two loops on this side and the two loops across and you go in and pull going to the next stitch grab these two loops and two loops on the other side and then that's pretty much what you do all the way to the end and here you should have your stitches should be lined up evenly so that you don't run out of stitches or you have three on one side and two left on, on one side you should be able to have the exact same number of stitches across here okay so you just go ahead and finish doing this and then when you finish all the way to the end here come back to the video and i will show you how to finish that off and i think i'm going to do buttons to be able to close the the front part of it i haven't decided yet to be honest but we will see i will try it on after i have these top closed and if i see that maybe some buttons will do i will probably add some buttons in the front if not then we'll just leave it like that okay so i'll see you guys when you get to right here okay my lovelies so i have gone all the way almost to the end here so as you can see i did my last stitch right here so i'm gonna go into the very final stitch as well and work my stitch there and i'm gonna do it twice just like we did the front and then bring that in here and lock it in then i'm gonna cut my yarn just somewhere here and then what i will do here is i will just weave these in and then that's done so this is it so i have just completed my hoodie and i've also decided in the meanwhile that i was probably just gonna put some buttons in the front but this is how the hood looks like okay just like this this is where your head goes and then the rest of the cape kind of just falls on your body like this it's very halloweeny i'll probably post it before october 31st because it's, it has a very it wasn't intended for that but i will probably post it like soon so that it's for halloween okay so this is it here it looks like this when you weave in the edge the top here it's gonna be gone and then this is just where your head goes and i think yeah, i'm gonna do buttons i think i will do buttons so what i will do is i will probably because i don't have enough yarn to do a strap see this is all i have left i don't have enough to do a strap to tie it here like this and then and then to let it loose so just to kind of have it a little bit different i think what i will do is i'll put buttons that i can then um i will put buttons that we can then either close it like this or leave it open that way you have an option of whether to leave it open or just close the top one here and leave the rest open that's going to be up to you but i went into my stash of buttons and i ended up finding these ones here i showed you guys these at the beginning like some packages but i ended up finding these ones here that are they have owls on them these are it's a bag i got from amazon and they just look like that they have like these owls on them but they are different colors of the owls for example this one has this like greenish color this one have like this reddish pinkish color this one has like this type of look okay so just these kind of buttons here so i picked four that i will use like this this color here i think this color will look good because it has this halloweeny feel to it as well the owl is sitting on like this black branch of wood like anyways i don't know why i'm overthinking it but i think i'm gonna use these ones and i decided four because i thought that i would put one on the very top here and then probably a couple of rows down i'll have one and then like um a couple of rows down more and then one at the very bottom here um yeah so that's what i have so what i will do is i will show you guys how to sew and i'm putting it on my left hand side while it's on the table the reason being is it's just because when i flip this to put this on it's going to end up automatically being on my right hand side so i'm going to have my buttons on the right hand side of my of my work but you know what i will do first I will see what side I actually want to be the inside because it's important when we're doing buttons. So I think if I flip my work like this, I will make this side be my outside. Like this. So this side will be my outside and the other side will be my inside. Okay, like this. 
Okay, so what I will do then, I will just put my buttons here. So I will put one probably about like here, so that it's not right in the very corner here. Or maybe, why not? Yeah, I think I'm going to put one in the very corner here. And then one couple of rows down, a couple of rows down, a couple of rows down. But I will show you guys how to just do this first one here. And then the rest of them, you're going to space them out the way you want to space them. So I'm going to put it like this, somewhere here. And then on the other side, we're just going to use these gaps. These gaps are big enough to be able to put your, to put your, um, your button through. Like it's going to go through no problem like this. Okay. But I will show you guys how to do the first one here. Just like the right there. And while I still have my darning needle and the little bit of yarn that I have left, which should be enough to do the buttons, I'm just going to hold it like this. And I'm going to just poke it on the other side to have my darning needle come through. Like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I didn't realize this. Let me go get my other darning needles, the smaller ones. I'll be right back. Okay, so I switched out my darning needle. So <laughs> I always forget this, but these uh, plastic darning needles here don't work very well when you're sewing in your buttons. Like they're too big. This part here is too big to go through the buttonhole. Um, so I do have these other package here that I also got from Amazon. Most of my crochet uh, gadgets are from Amazon with exception of yarn, obviously. I think maybe I got yarn from Amazon once or twice, but uh, most of my gadgets are from there. So as you can see here, I have this one that I had to get the first time I tried to sew in some buttons and very quickly came to the realization that I couldn't do with this. So I ended up getting these ones here. So they have different sizes in them like this. They have the big ones that, that will not do this, that will not fit. But they go as small as this one here so just in case you want to use it for something so they have different sizes that you can kind of choose from here okay so anyways I'm just kind of talking about this stuff just in case you make a mistake like i did with thinking you're gonna be able to sew with the other ones but you can't anyway so now that we have fixed that we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sh show you guys how to do this. So we're just gonna go on the other side and pop this in. So you just kind of poke it through there. And you bring it in. You leave a little bit of yarn there like this. And then you go to the other side, take it back like this. Don't pull it too hard so that it's like this on this side. You can go into this first one one more time if you want. And you just kind of play until it hits the, the hole. And then you go, bring it in. And then you go on the other side, bring it out, and we'll just do it twice here. I don't think we need to do too many times. And now that we have it like this, I'm going to take my scissors, cut my yarn, and then I just nod these guys here. I just do a nice couple of knots until it's secure, and then I will remove the excess yarn. So I just do like, I think that's like number four knots, number of knots, and then I just cut it off like this. Okay, and so this button is done here. And then what we will do is we will see how long, how many more to go down. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's go nine, then nine. 10 and 10 okay so we'll do 10 from the very next stitch here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 so here in the 10th we'll do 1 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 we will do 1 here and then 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 it's gonna be 11 for the final one okay so i will put one here 10 down i'll put one and then 11 down i'll put one all the way at the end okay so i'm gonna have you guys do that put your buttons in just exactly like i did here and then when we finish come back to the video and then we'll kind of conclude the video okay see you guys in a bit okay my lovelies so i have gone ahead and completed the buttons so i have four all together i have one in the very bottom here i have this one that one and that one so they're done um, I weaved in all of my ends, so as you can see, uh, the yarn that we had here is gone, um, and as well as where we finished off at the bottom here, I weaved that in as well, so we have the uh, 
the uh, project is pretty much done so again the buttons are optional you don't have to do the buttons if you don't, you have extra yarn you would have just done a, a, a drawstring or something to put it by the neck here to be able to just close it here on the neck but the rest of it can fall like that but with this option here i can just use the top button here so i'll just use the gaps on the actual project on this side to do my um to put my buttons in so for example this one i'll just use that that area there to do the, the first button like this and then oopsie dropped my scissors and then uh the rest of it you could just do the same way you just kind of go like this and put your button there and then for the next one you just go here and do your button right there and then for the final one, you could just go ahead and do your button there like this, okay? So this way, your front is completely closed. And you can either have it like this on the chilly days that you don't want to have any air going through. For example, on Halloween night, if you want to be out and trick-or-treating and you want to have your uh, cape on, this is what you can wear and this is how you can wear it. Or you can just remove the buttons, or not remove the buttons, but undo the buttons altogether. And just leave it like that when you wear it so it's more kind of like a, a cape that just goes around your body and gives you coverage but obviously the front will kind of fall open a little bit like this okay but that's it i'm gonna end the video here thank you so much for watching this to the end it's again my first cape for the channel so hopefully you guys will enjoy this i'm trying to do different things here and there just so you guys have a variety of things that you can watch on the channel uh to help kind of diversify, diversify it a little bit Anyway, so this is it here. Thank you again for watching it to the end. Make sure you share, comment, like, and subscribe. Of course, if you haven't subscribed yet, that really does help me with the algorithms. And I appreciate all of you guys who are already subscribed and your support and everything. And I will see you guys definitely in the next one. Bye.